happening. So, <clears throat> podcast sleepy time. Sunday. Yay. Sorry, what? It's a sleepy Sunday. Yeah, kind of. Oh. So. It always is. <laughs> Hi, Yay. patience. Patience here. Yay. It's been a while. So, yeah. And I'm sorry again for that. Well, that's all right. It happens. <clears throat> so, I don't know about you guys, but I went and I, I saw some, some movies. Oh, God, really? You went yeah. and saw some movies? I went and saw a movie, and then I saw another movie at home. Ah, okay. But uh, the movie I went to go see in the theater <clears throat> was uh, Snake Eyes. Oh, um, I have did I talk no about that idea. Before? I have no okay. idea what that is. So Snake Eyes is um, it's, it's Snake Eyes, a G.I. Joe origin. Right? Oh, God. So Snake Eyes was the G.I. Joe character who was a ninja. And his whole thing was that, like, there was an accident and his vocal cords were destroyed. And so he's he can't speak. And so he's a silent ninja. And he goes out and he does all the cool things. And he has the coolest character <clears throat> design. So, you know, he, he, he's he's like the Boba Fett of the of the series we're like wow that's a really cool design i'll buy those figures I, I assume he was a bad guy because snake no no he was a good guy he he wore he was a ninja but uh snake eyes is you know the whole dice term of you roll the two ones and it is snake but eyes, yeah. the, the bad guys were called cobra commander and serpentor i feel like they have a motif going it's weird to have someone with a snake name <laughs> yeah good guys so um uh, I would call this movie um, uh, it's kind of stupid. Oh, yeah, it's G.I. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, this is an origin. So this is back when um, Snake Eyes, we never get his, his real name or anything. Uh, we, we just call him Snake Eyes throughout the movie. Because uh, when he was a kid, um, <clears throat> this guy was going to kill his father and was like, oh, let me roll this dice and see whether you live or you die. Uh, and then he rolls Snake Eyes, and that's, then that's now the name of our character is Snake Eyes. That's really dumb. Yeah, it is. And they got um, this uh, this guy who has this... Um, like, he's not natively um, American. You can tell he has, like, a, a British accent, but you know, he's Asian. And they try to get him to uh, play an American... And that guy cannot carry an American accent to save his life. He he was constantly falling out into his original accent all the time. And I'm like, these are the takes that you went with. He really just couldn't do it, huh? No Hugh Laurie <laughs> then, I guess. And um not even a Ben Benedict Cumberbund. Star Trek yeah. guy, yeah. He's not good at it either, but he can kind of do okay. Not I thought yeah, no, that was Cumberbatch. Yeah, <laughs> I gave up on his name. Okay, <laughs> there's, give me a break. There's, there's like the okay, you can do it, but you can do it poorly, and then there's that no, you just straight up you abandoned that accent for that line. Hmm. Oh, it's real bad. <laughs> um, but uh, it it for the majority of the movie. Um, our main character is working for the bad guys because he's trying to earn the trust of these people so that he can go in there and um, steal something and bring it over to the bad guys so that they can um, hand over his father's killer and all that. It's a really dumb plan. Yeah. But he really wants revenge. It's what he built his entire life around. If he built his entire life around it, you'd think he'd come up with a better plan. Yeah. Well, he, he's basically being a spy um, for uh, the bad guys. You know, she finds out is uh, Cobra. 
Cobra Command, and then he finds out what they are, and he's like, I didn't sign up for this. And he's like, well, we'd literally have the guy who killed your dad locked him in a room over there. Um, well, not over there, but, like, somewhere. And uh, if you want to, you know, end his life yourself, you got to do what we say. And he's like, yeah, well, I do want to kill him. <laughs> Gonna go betray these nice people. Don't mind me. Okay. Who are, you know, offering me family and uh, helping me out. And, okay. Yeah. So, uh, it's a silly movie. Like, the, the thing they're trying to steal has, like, these magical powers. If you just point at something and it suddenly explodes and is on fire. That sounds and... about right for G.I. Joe. <laughs> but, like, it's dumb, but it's dumb <clears throat> in the way that, with my personality, yeah, I'd watch a second one. <laughs> <laughs> I'd make fun of it, but I'd watch a second one. I didn't feel like my time was completely wasted. So it's kind of like a B movie thing, only with a budget. Yeah. Mm. Um. I also. Uh... <clears throat> Sorry. I went. Uh, um. We we kind of streamed it, but I, I saw the Jungle Cruise movie. What? So the Disney movie uh, Jungle Cruise, designed around their ride um, at Disney called Jungle Cruise. Oh, they're trying to do pirates again. So, yeah, they are. By which I mean they're trying to do pirates again after they tried to do the Haunted Mansion, which also didn't do mm -hmm. very well. But, you know, third time's the ch charm? I don't think that applies in the circumstance. So... It takes place in the year 1916, where some uh, British explorer types want to go out there and find this uh, tree of life type thing where it has petals that will heal any illness uh, and uh, curing, cure any disease, any wound, just perfect healing, super awesome. We can use this to to help um, our people and help the world. And then there's like the Germans and they want it because they want to win the war because it's World War I time. Yeah, you'd think this would be a bad time to go on like holiday. And then uh, the explorers go down and they find, the, you know, oh, if we want to get to where we need to go, we need to book ourselves a, a, a jungle cruise. <laughs> we need to get a guy to uh, guide us down. And that's when they meet the rock. Oh, uh, I did not expect this to come off stupider than the G.I. Joe movie, but all right. And um, they do the thing <clears throat> where whenever you go on the jungle cruise ride, uh, your tour guide... Um, is literally just there constantly gabbing and making jokes and um that's kind of the main appeal it's like it's a little bit of a comedy show with just being able to ride around in a boat where you you know can rest your feet um after staying in line for so long <laughs> that's the appeal of the jungle cruise ride in my opinion is oh hey get to go on a little ride get some air going and cooling me down and i get to sit down and listen to some guy tell jokes so The Rock tells a lot of jokes. Yeah. All right. Some of them funny. <clears throat> some of them, uh, well, you know, comedy is subjective. Mm. Um, and they really, they really went down on, you are not allowed to leave this boat. We are going to make a plot around this Jungle Cruise. It's called Jungle Cruise. There was a curse with these ancient Spanish explorers who were here 400 years ago, and they cannot leave sight of the river, and they're the enemy. So, But you need to go down the river to get to the thing, so you have to stay on the river. You can't leave the river. This is a Jungle Cruise. The entire plot feels like it's built around the fact that it is a Jungle Cruise, and I find that hilarious. 
That's such a weird approach compared to pirates. Uh huh. Mm. It's almost like one is a concept <clears throat> built around an entire group of people with varying goals, and the other is built around a boat being in the water. Mm. Yeah, there's there's not much. Well, there there are places you could go with it. They're not exactly kosher in 2021, but uh, mm. yeah. It was uh... if they tried to do it in a similar fashion to the Jungle Book, like just give the interactions with the animals there or something. They could probably make a good movie that way. Hmm, that's a thought. Snake Eyes is is bad, and I can have fun with it because it's bad. Um, Jungle Cruise. Uh, it's kind of boring at times. I, I don't know. Like I, I like The Rock. He's good. It's dumb in a way that you can't make the most of it being dumb. Yeah, other than like, look, they're on the boat all the time, and The Rock is telling jokes, and um, there's this whole thing with the curse of <clears throat> of these explorers who are still trying to get that tree of life and they had a whole treachery in the background and now the explorers have been revived by the Germans and one of them is made of bees. Am I the only one who thinks that this is something straight out of Raiders of the Lost Ark? No, because Raiders of the Lost Ark made sense. It, it, it It's very much trying to go for that type of thing. But um, there, there's some, there's a lot of fantastical elements of this. Mm. Like you got the guy who's made out of bees, the guy who's made out of trees, the guy who's made out of snakes, and the guy who's made out of mud. And and they're all immortal and trying to stop you, so they can get to the tree, and break their curse so that they can die, I guess. But now that's straight out of Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, it is. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with recycling an old plot if you can bring enough things that are new and good to it to make it seem fresh. Mm -hmm. This seems like it's more like three, four, maybe five different stories cobbled together without the right, uh, without the right coat of paint. I feel like maybe being a little gen it's it sounds like there's a bunch of half stories that are cobbled together rather than full ones. There's also a romantic su there's also a romantic <clears throat> subplot between the girl explorer and the rock. Of course. I mean in fairness it's the rock. I, yeah, it's I, the I, rock. I, I mean I get like it. <laughs> I, yeah. But um it feels like they tried to make the rock into like Jack Sparrow, but not really. Yeah. Like you can def like after we watched it, my mom was just like, "Yeah, that that reminded me a lot of Pirates of the Caribbean." No kidding. And I'm like yeah, except there's a uh, um no real pirates and uh... yeah, Jack Sparrow was only Jack Sparrow because of Johnny Depp. Like, mm -hmm. he was re more or less responsible in totality for that character. Yeah. <clears throat> so, The Rock has chops in terms of, like, acting. He's, he's not a bad actor by any means. He's not what I would call a creative actor. Johnny Depp has a history of going kind of off the wall with his characters, and it works most of the time. But Dwayne has a tendency to just play it more or less how he played The Rock most of the time, actually. Uh, think about it. He, he mm -hmm. kind of has a thing of just being kind of tough and irreverent. 
and dismissive and tough. Yeah, that explains his character in this movie. And in Welcome to the Jungle, and in Moana, and in etc. Mm-hmm. He, 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 yeah. You, you could hang Pirates of the Caribbean on Johnny Depp alone. You cannot do the same thing with Dwayne Johnson. I yeah. mean, Maui was probably the best character in Moana, though. Not a lot of competition. There was like six characters, but yeah. Conceded. But the guy who they um, have playing the uh, the German leader is um, he's the one dude who's uh, friends with Daredevil in the Netflix show. Oh, the guy who played Foggy. I forget his name. Yeah, I, I think it's Foggy. Yeah, that that's that's the that's the bad guy. He does not seem like a guy who would be able to play a bad guy, but okay. I have not seen the performance, so maybe. I mean, you know, he has a, a German accent the entire time. Well. Or at least he tries to. Who knows? Neither of us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, honestly, it, it, it's. In terms of quality for Jungle Cruise, I'd put that away from the Pirates of the Caribbean stuff and closer to the Haunted Mansion level, if that makes sense. Based on what you've told us, it absolutely makes sense. I mean... I think someone was talking to him. Uh, Yeah, sorry. As I was saying. uh, What was I saying? Right. (laughs) The Haunted Mansion... They had a good cast. They had Eddie Murphy. They had Wallace Shawn. They had... Mm -hmm. Those are the two that come to mind anyway. They just didn't play it the horrific way that they should have. Disney knows how to do horror, or at least they used to. And with Jungle Cruise, um, there's just not enough. There's not enough to actually have a full um, engaging story, and so they just kind of keep sticking to the the title of Jungle Cruise. And, you know. um, Like, Pirates of the Caribbean had such a strong identity thanks to Johnny Depp's performance and with... um, some of the ideas that they went that, you know, they went back and they changed the ride to add him in, you know, Mm. um, there's a saying of uh, like taking the, I guess in this case, it's an adaptation and, and trying to elevate it above the source material. Mm. And I, I don't feel like they succeeded there. Yeah. I will say probably the weirdest part of what you've told me is that they went with World War One, but then decided to make the Germans once again definitively the bad guys. Like that works in World War Two, not so much in one. Yeah, like uh, the the dudes in the German dudes in like England trying to get the thing and then his the, his name gets said and he's like oh you shouldn't have said my name and then he just kills a bunch of innocent people because they heard his name that wasn't how World War 1 went down it was misery on all sides no one was in the right or wrong and it was just a bunch of incredibly powerful empires crashing against each other at once <laughs> there, there was no bad guy it was just suffering for no reason I, I it's it's a weird choice well on Tuesday um, me and my dad are going on like five dollar uh, movie night to go see the green Knight which is the Arturian legend you know the green Knight with uh, Gawain I believe who is secretly Batman, who went back in time and decided to go on a color scheme change. I really reached for that joke, didn't I? I just went, Yeah, you, yeah, you no, did. I can't that went around the world. <laughs> uh, 
But, uh, you know, I, I've heard good things. I saw the trailer. It looks it looks pretty fun. I haven't seen um, this myth in particular being adapted before. Yeah, you don't see a lot of stuff with Gawain. He's like one of, like, I wouldn't say lesser known. Like, people probably know his name. But his particular legend isn't really spoken of much. Mm-hmm. In comparison to obviously Arthur, Mordred, Lancelot, uh, Galahad, uh, Robin. Yeah. <laughs> Sir Robin. Yeah. <laughs> Brave uh, Sir Robin ran away. It's a fun legend. Yeah. Bravely Gentle. ran away. <laughs> oh, the brave Sir Robin. Mm. Um. <laughs> Uh, but um, I'm going to go see that um, hope it's good uh, it's, it's the story of this one guy came in and challenged us so we're just going to go travel and train for like a year so that we can beat him up classic DBZ storytelling oh cool it, it gotta beat up the immortal knight let's go sounds good to me <laughs> so you know what it's a simple concept. I hope they don't muck it up. Yeah, Jungle Cruise could probably have like benefited from something like that. Like, okay, we're going on a cruise in the jungle, and it's still 1916, but we're all dumb British socialites who have, who are lucky enough to have money in a time of really complex and disastrous suffering of everyone of the lower class. So they go on a jungle cruise and throw around a bunch of money and then they end up suffering misery because they're in a jungle and they have no idea how to deal. They sent a they sent a U-boat into the jungle cruise. Was that even a thing in World War One? It, it was. I believe but... they... Yeah. No, no, you're right. I mean, I know that they're a German creation, but yeah, they came about near the end of World War One, right? Um, uh, they 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 really started um, like around nineteen, like uh, yeah, they they did show up in as early as nineteen fourteen, but like the these things are are, are pretty uh, precious and valuable thing this early on. And we're just going to go send one on a jungle cruise to find the mystical tree of life. Let's go! <laughs> yeah. No. A, a stupid, dumb romp through the jungle watching rich people get theirs would probably have been a better fit for that whole idea. Want to frame it like Lord of the Flies? Yeah, maybe. I guess that will probably be kind of a retread of uh, the new Jumanji's, but eh. well, uh, aside from all of that, um, been watching some anime. Yeah. Uh, was what I finished up that uh, full dive RPG one, the one that's just absolute misery, and it. Ended on a somewhat hopeful note of the the dude who um, went into the super realism uh, full dive VR RPG um, now deciding, well, I got my butt kicked in there. So I'm going to go out. I'm going to start running again because I did track. I'm going to train and get my life in order. And then we can go challenge it again. Which, you know what? That was, that was a good note to end that like first season on. Of, like, I'm, I'm not going to embarrass myself again. I'm going to I'm going to actually get up and, and start to make some changes in my life. So I can do better in a video game. Yeah, which, you know what? It, it's helping him do better in life and helping repair his relationship with his family, so I sure. mean, yeah, that's like, I know some people that have used Beat Saber as a um, way to get healthier. Yeah. It is surprising uh, to see, but it absolutely works. Um... Let's see. Uh, I've been watching the, um, I've been watching the Slime Reincarnation show um, as that's coming out. Just a, a, a few shows. Um, 
I, I want to recommend um, there is a show which uh, is recent, just came out and is based off a manga that I read, and it's called uh, Remake Our Life. Okay. Um, where the basic premise is uh, the main character um, is 28 years old um, game developer, right? He's a working um, at a, a, a kind of a black comp- company, you know, the kind that really abuse their workers, toxic work environment. Mm. Um, that gets shut down, ends up finding another um, job, uh, and things are looking great, and then their development studio gets shut down as well. Mm. And he is absolutely down on his luck, um, and he has a lot of regrets about his past, because uh, 10 years ago, he had the opportunity to go to a to an art mm. school and pursue his dreams of being able to go and create things. Um, but he decided to go into a business school instead, and it it really kind of messed with him until he was able to refocus later on, and um, it, it, he, he's been very unhappy ever since he made that choice. And so, you know, he wishes that he could just go back in time and, and fix it all. And for one reason or another, he ends up traveling back 10 years into the past, to the grand era of 2006. Because, you know, and uh, he gets a chance to go to the... Sorry. He gets a, uh, to go to the um, arts college and that he always wanted to. And the show really goes into a lot of um, the creation of these large-scale pro- projects and how it takes a lot of people to work and how you have to adapt um, scripts on the fly for writers or how um, the producers... and work and how editing works and it, it goes pretty in depth on that and it's 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 really fun to watch it's a a bit lighthearted. so uh for us creative types you know i, I think it's a good watch hmm. um as well as uh, a manga i previously recommended which was uh five seconds before battle where the dude has the power to, um, it's like a, it's like a, I was watching with a friend, they, they likened it to a fighting game of a bunch of people get uh, essentially kidnapped to go and fight each other for a chance at freedom. And they all are given superpowers and the main character gets a superpower where his power is whatever the other person thinks his power is. Which hmm. is my favorite power. Whatever the other person thinks your power is, so just lie really hard. And don't tell them what your power actually is, because then you're going to be screwed. And that's a fun one. Uh, I also watched uh, a new uh, anime called uh, Girlfriend Girlfriend. Um, Because I was bored. (laughs) Good reasons, any. And uh, it's it's like a like a, a harem type thing where um, dude is dating this girl, and then this other girl comes out, and she's just like, "I, I love you. I've spent the last three months training nonstop for the chance to confess to you." And he's like, "Plug, you know, you're really cute, and duh, I can kind of feel bad." Uh, can we go ask my girlfriend if maybe I can date both of you? <laughs> and 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 so it begins, and it's it's very funny. It, it, it's just a very funny little um, harem show, I guess. Um, okay. And I guess that's it for anime. Um, I did play a, a new game recently, but I'm, I'm fairly early on and don't have much to say about that. Um. Except uh, there's another game I played. Uh, I don't. I didn't. I, I didn't mention it last week, but because it just came out. But the near uh, gotcha game, near reincarnation. I mean, it hadn't come out that week, had it? Yeah, I don't think so. So uh, near reincarnation, 
which I know you've been playing as well, Casey. Oh, God. I had so much work to do this week, and I did none of it. I blame you. Oh, I'm sorry. Hmm. So that's 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 a game. It's it's very it's very near. It I like yeah. Go ahead. Well, I was gonna say I really like the music in it. Oh, obviously that goes without saying. That's yeah. Yeah, they got they got the the good music. And the whole thing is built around uh, weapon stories, which I find to be really interesting. Uh, weapon stories via character stories, or character yes. stories via weapon stories. It's not actually yeah that much and, about the weapon. They just happen to be holding them at the time. And and the character story is, uh, you know, oh, that's a character that you're going to get, and you can get a more powerful version in the gotcha. Yeah. Uh, little light on characters uh, for all of that in fact uh, with its crossover event one of the characters in the near the second summon banner for the near mm -hmm. gacha one of them is actually just one of the characters in the main story uh, um, I think uh, both Fio and Akeha are in the oh yeah story. both of them are yeah absolutely because Theo um, is the main character, effectively. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, low on characters, but you know what? It just launched. Yeah. And it launched with 2B. Yeah. And I can imagine at one point they'll do like a, a near replicant crossover as well. Yeah. I, I would imagine a near replicant and I would imagine that they're going to have like um like all of the characters have alternates. So like you've got a four star version, a three star version, and a two star mm -hmm. version. I feel like they're going to have one for near himself of Babby version and Big Version, and they're both just near. Yeah. And uh, I wonder if they'll actually start, like, if they're going to go the route of adding a lot of original characters or if they're just going to go and, like, I don't know, throw in Dragon Guard characters as well. I would assume so. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, the game has been running for, like, six months in Japan. Mm -hmm. And I think there has been a Dragon Guard banner, three specifically, I think. Hey, very cool. Uh, yeah, so that's... Yeah, I I am enjoying the story. I find a lot of the wandering around a little bit tedious because it's very empty and it's just walking from place to place with yeah. loading screens between. It's not very engaging. Um, fuck the birds. Ugh, that's awful. awful. Okay, I was playing through one of the snow levels, and I the bird was literally the size of a single pixel. Yeah, that happens. And it's just like, are you kidding me? Yep. Uh, look forward to the black and white level. Where you gonna find? Hmm. Anyway, uh, as for the oh. actual stories in the levels themselves. It feels kind of like they're all rejected ideas for Yoko Taro's games. Like, they are just bare bones. Like, okay, here's an idea. Um, giant flowers attack, and then humanity forms a resistance against the flower invaders and also humans are now slaves so they can fight the flower invaders yeah it feels kind of like uh yeah these are these are things that these are ideas he has but just hasn't really bothered to flesh out that much because mm -hmm. for one reason or another 
decided it's not gonna work. I'm not gonna. I have better ideas than this. But he's just chucking them all into this mobile game because why the fuck not? The the response of like, oh, they're just making it to make money. Thanks, Yoko Taro. Yeah, I mean, they being are. honest as always. Hmm. Um, story wise, I've been having a lot of fun with it. Gameplay wise, uh, obviously, you know. The auto button is great. Yeah, it sure is a, a nice auto button. <laughs> it is an auto button that improves. Yes, I saw that. I was like, oh, neat. Yep. Beat chapter six on hard, and you can get the auto button to actually do all of the things automatically instead of half of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, has 3D models for the characters too, which, hey, that's nice. It was also nice to hear that um, the uh, automatic characters did actually reprise their roles. I wasn't sure at first because, uh, you know, yeah. you don't get a lot of voice lines from them. But uh, it is them, as far as I can and tell. And the, there's the uh, the exploration mode, which you can do, like, mini games. And yeah. the, I only have unlocked the first one, but the mini game with the shooting, that's a lot of fun. I don't think the second one is unlockable yet. Okay. Because I've done through chapter 9, which is everything on normal, uh, and chapter 6 on hard. Uh, I haven't unlocked the second exploration thing. I, I don't think it's actually in the game yet. Uh, but okay. The first one is quite fun. I have spent, like, I mean, as much time as it has allowed me in it, and I am quite good at it. I got uh, I got S rank on my first try. Yeah. That is the thing we can. It it depends as much as anything on what cubes spawn. Because like if you get the red ones, then yeah, that's a lot of points. Otherwise, not so much. You're gonna get an A at best. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that that game's fun. Uh, I have been enjoying my time with it so far. And uh, look forward to uh, clearing up the story. I'm like uh, oh. midway through chapter six right now. Yeah. So I, I will say one other thing. It does do the near thing of, well, for one, it does do the near thing of, hey, the story's ended. You're done as this character. And then changes the framing of the game entirely, as it tends to do. Oh. Like cool. a campaign two kind of thing, uh, and there is more content in hard, and I assume very hard. I haven't actually played those. Yet, oh, but... that's pretty cool. Yeah, if you finish the hard chapter in its entirety, then it will unlock uh, the text story thing that it did in Automata. And... Okay, I like that. I yeah. like taking that. Um that aspect of near and, and putting into this game that's fun yeah and it fleshes out some of the character stories even more and stuff so that's pretty cool yeah no i'm, I'm excited to play more i didn't know that yeah. um also i was able to get merlin and fgo finally thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. oh my gosh thank, thank you. you now i can bust her and they announced a new character in that game who yeah. enables buster even more I started to raise my fist in a cheer and it ended up in a jerk off motion. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I, I assume you're talking about. Uh, who are you talking about as new character? The, the, in JP, they just announced um, the sixth anniversary character who is uh, Koyanskaya or Tamamovic. Uh oh. Oh. Great. Well, at least I know I won't have to roll for that. And she's an assassin that gives a targetable 50% battery and um, reduces skill cooldown by two for a character. Um, and gives a huge buster and crit buff for three turns. And So uh, she's Buster Tamamo, basically. Yeah, with, when she can also do um, damage because she has an AoE uh, buster NP. Hmm. So she's a AoE Buster assassin who works, and can allow three turn looping with most Buster characters by 
sheer just skill cooldown reduction. Hmm. So, like, um, I saw somebody doing um, with Artoria just three turn clearing with um, right because double. they have they have a thirty percent battery on yep. there, so that you can yeah, and you can just do that with Artoria or with Mordred. That's pretty cool. If you have, if you have skill cooldown of seven or less, um, and you use Atlas uniform, um, you can just literally skill cooldown your way into three turn farming with most Buster servants. Mm. Um, depending on, you know, if you have a, you might need an MLB K scope if they don't have a good battery, but you can K scope normally. Yeah, that so. is, uh, that makes Buster viable again. Yeah. After they decided um, to break it because of Merlin. People are able to three turn farm with, um, Aresh. Ishtar becomes super busted in that she can have her mana burst always up for, uh, turns two and three because it has a very short cooldown. Um, yeah, it, it's it's actually a really interesting way to approach um, making that that damage type, uh, that card type, very different. Mm. So I like it, and that's a lot of other things, but I won't I won't go into it here. Yeah. Just because uh, it's unrelated, but that's it for my week, as far as I can remember of things that are of import. Big week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Patient, hey, hey, how, how's, how's, it's, it's been a while. How's it going? How's it been going? It's been going. It's been going rather quickly. I mean, already in the eighth month of the year now. Mm. Work has been steadily growing a bit more uh, frustrating. The job itself hasn't changed, but people keep leaving. My oh. only fellow teller will be leaving after this coming week, the one that starts tomorrow. And after he leaves, there will be exactly two employees working at the branch, including myself. Uh, hold on a sec. Only a small amount of employees. Yeah, that's uh, that's less less than you could reasonably run. Uh, I forget whether yep. it was like a bank or a credit union that he works at. Anything less than two would be against the rules. But arguably be two nice. is also against the rules, but okay. Arguably, yeah. But I mean this bank hasn't played by the rules, strictly speaking. Hmm. They were the only one who never even slowed down during COVID. They didn't close their branches for a day. Hmm. Hmm. Also, I was offered a raise a uh, and a promotion a little while back. They were going to give me a 30 cent increase. I turned it down unless they made me, uh, unless they could give me $14 an hour. <laughs> At yeah, minimum. Just, yeah, like what are you getting paid now? 13 and change. Mm hmm. And they're just going to give you like, oh, here's 30 cents more and a lot more work. Yep. Mm. Uh, Honestly, I don't think the market as a whole is going to last much longer. Time will tell. Mm. And I just need to be well on my way out before that happens. I have people who are looking out for me. So I'll just need to take them up on that. Mm. And speaking of people looking out for me, the Cross Brain has finally uh, gotten an apartment uh, booked. Or, okay, that's an exaggeration. We've submitted applications for an apartment, and we should receive a notice of approval or denial later this week. 
I don't see any reason why we would be denied. Hmm. Due to move in in October. So that should be fun. Hmm. We're also due to post the next chapter of this bites on our anniversary, September 19th, International Talk Like a Pirate Day. Uh, we haven't course. finished it. We haven't finished it yet, not even close, but hopefully setting ourselves a deadline should light enough of a fire under us that we can double down and get to it. A month and a half should be more than enough time. We are very different people, so maybe that will work better for you than it does for me. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. And what else? In the video game family. Uh, I have finally laid Persona 5, uh, the vanilla version, aside for good. Because I finally claimed the last trophy. Congratulations. Yeah. It still baffles me that you're still playing five regular. Uh, it was only because I hadn't platinumed it yet. Yeah, now I have. It's. Oh boy. Okay. Let, let me guess. Royals next. <laughs> I already platinum Royal. It doesn't oh. have as strict requirements. Okay. I mean, I'm. it has more replayability. I'm probably just going to go back for it just for fun. And for a certain fan fiction idea that we have. Hmm. I've already started transcribing the whole game. You know, there's probably a script out there, right? Probably. No, probably not. There wasn't a transcript for the twins. One thing. Anyway, that aside. For the time being, I'm revisiting Cuphead. I already beat the game with straight A's and straight P's across the running gun levels. Now, I am casually going after the S's. I've gotten two so far. I really should go back to... Uh... Cuphead at some point. I never actually beat that game. I mean, it's hard, but it's fun. And it looks great. Mm. And it also has a nut tune with Wayne Brady as King Dice. King Dice. I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to do with that. I mean... Even if it's just a uh, reimagining of the game as a series, that would that could be good. I'd be interested to see that, as long as they do it right. I'm kind of amazed over here. Apparently, the people translated and posted the entire script of Persona 5 translated from Japanese but no one has, like, put together the full script of the localized version. <laughs> and, of course, there are a few tweaks in Royal compared to the vanilla version. Mm. Oh. Honestly, there's not much else going on with me. Time just keeps going by, and things don't change all that much, though they will soon. Oh, 
Uh, new Pokemon Snap is a lot of fun. And they've announced a free update for that with an added area. They have. I'm looking forward to that. Yes, oh, staff. I didn't even know that. Yeah, they're adding more content. Yay. I need to play the bloody game. But I keep getting dragged into more gotchas, Zero. <laughs> I'm this sorry. is your fault I haven't played it yet. Not mine for not for playing the game. Of course. It's only my fault. It's only my fault, of course. Clearly. <laughs> maybe I need to reframe my thinking of Pokemon Snap. Technically, that's a gotcha, maybe? I mean, you have to go. No, it's not random. So, you know. Pokemon Snap. Well, it is in some cases, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Just, just play when you need to relax. That's all you got to do. It's a nice, relaxing game. And a lot of fun. But some parts can be kind of tricky, like trying to wake up something that's sleeping right there and you can't see how you're supposed to do it even after going on the track a dozen times. <laughs> uh, but I'll get it. I want to take a thousand pictures of Bidoof. Why is that a meme? Don't answer that. I don't really want to know. Because What's your Bidoof week been sucks. like, Casey? The, the meaning is because Bidoof sucks on every level, but that kind of makes you feel sorry for it and want to cheer for it. What about Sunkern? What about Unknown? What about... <laughs> unknown is people. weird, metaphysical, mystical bullshit. Bidoof is just a fucking beaver. Yeah. As you say. Well, that's... Um, there isn't much else for me to say. So, on to the star of our show. Was that? You. That's very kind of you to lie. Okay. <laughs> uh... Uh, I, I got almost nothing. Uh, we already talked about Nia, which devoured the latter half of my week. Uh. You got, you got 2B, didn't you? I got all of the main three. Yeah. Awesome. I'm still trying to get 9S, but I haven't cleared, um, the story yet, so. Yeah, Hoping to I, get enough to do some more rolls. I have done 230 rolls on those banners. <laughs> And how much money did you spend? Uh, I bought the introductory package, which was, I think, £24? Okay. I I, I, I think I, I, I spent, like, 6 bucks to just complete a 10 roll at one point, but I was like, that's all I'm going to spend. And yeah. so far, I've been able to do, like, 120-ish rolls just off the free currency. Very generous game. Yeah, well, it's a very generous game to start with. I'm, oh, of course, like every gacha game. <laughs> yeah, I have gotten to the point where it's like, mm, it's starting to get a little tricky to get more gems. <laughs> uh, yeah. I uh, need to upgrade a lot of stuff, which means a lot of uh, just setting it up to run on automatic for a while. I wish there was like a quadruple speed or something, but I guess because it actually insists on playing out the fights, that would be a bit too intensive for the devices it expects you to run the game on. Mm. Uh, I say that, it doesn't actually run at double speed if you set it to run on automatic. Auto-repeat. It does it at regular speed. Which is a weird. Yeah, it does it at regular speed, and then if you go back into actually manually playing the game, by which I mean going into a node and not setting it to auto repeat, so you're just doing it auto for the node, it also like it turns the function off game wide, not just for doing the auto repeat. So if you go into another node, it'll be at regular speed again. It's weird. I, I don't know why they decided to do that. Like, 
if you're going on auto repeat, you want it to go quickly and just get done while you're not looking at it. And you're already at the point where you don't need to look at it. Because you, if you go in auto repeat, you can't actually do anything anymore. Like, if you set it to that, you can't even see the UI. It doesn't exist. You just mm. have to be confident enough that you can't lose. Because if things start to go south, you literally can't do anything about it. So, it's it's a weird decision. I, I, I don't get it. But, uh... Yeah. Hmm... I will say one thing that I did, like, um, it wasn't actually this week, it was the week before. Um, while I was grinding in Genshin and doing stuff in that, because, you know, new event and stuff, a new region and all that stuff. Um, while I was exploring and doing random shit in the new region, I was having, uh, I was putting House, the TV show, on in the background. Mm-hmm. That show still holds up. Mostly. Uh, What's the mostly about? Weirdly enough, it was the, like, overarching plot that really pissed me off enough to stop me watching. Because, you know, the house doctor show, it's Sherlock Holmes, but with medicine. Uh, which means Dr. House, as is typical for a Sherlock Holmes, has a drug problem. He had a surgery on his leg that went bad, and so now he is in constant pain and has to take Vicodin to treat it. Mm -hmm. Uh, A lot of the overarching plot of the show is about him dealing with his addiction. And a lot of the drama of the show comes from his so-called friends trying to quote-unquote help him in the worst possible ways. <laughs> like, one of them going, I think you're addicted to Vicodin. No, I am in constant pain if I don't take Vicodin. I bet you you can't go a week without taking any. So he does. It goes badly. Sounds really weird. <laughs> yeah, it's not great. And then uh, the point that actually pissed me off enough to stop watching the show was uh, end of season two, he gets another surgery in hopes of actually fixing at least the pain in his leg. And it seems to work. Start of season three, he's doing great, he's running, he's not feeling pain, he's not on Vicodin anymore. So he's not drugged up to his eyeballs, so his judgement should be more trustworthy. Naturally, it is at this point that every single one of his colleagues decides not to trust his judgement. Uh, and... He comes up with a genius solution, as, you know, a Holmes character would, of, you know, fixing the patient's problem. He comes up with exactly what the, the problem that they're dealing with is, that no one else has figured out, and the treatment is very simple and safe, and even if he's wrong, the treatment won't cause any problems. Everyone refuses to do it. Except then they do the treatment behind his back, and just let him think that they don't trust him. Why? And it turns out he's right. And they refuse to tell him. But why? I don't know. <laughs> like, uh... Seems just really stupid. Yeah, like, the reason I started watching the show was because... Naturally, as tends to happen, a clip of it showed up in YouTube and I fell down a fucking rabbit hole of watching house clips. Uh, and that was one of the clips that came up and I saw a comment that was like, yeah, this is why he relapses. <laughs> because everyone around him is determined to fuck with him until he does. 
And it's like, yeah, you actually watch it in the context of the full show. Yeah. Every time that he has his judgment supposedly better because he's not drugged up to his eyeballs, everyone stops trusting him. So of course he's going to fucking relapse. Uh, Ugh, it really pissed me off. <laughs> I don't... Mm. Yeah, so that was that was that was a very frustrating watch, which is a shame because I was very much enjoying it and hadn't actually gotten up to the seasons that I enjoyed the most because they had a major cast change like after season three, and I liked the characters from then on more than I do the original ones. Uh, but yeah, I couldn't stomach watching the show anymore because it was that irritating. Hmm. It's a shame. It, it, it's like the the writers have a vendetta against um, a certain type of person and they make that character um, their interpretation of that type of person. I guess. Mm. I, I can't I can't think of a, the sort of a, I'm doing this for your own good type of person. Yeah. There's something very specific they're aiming for there. Um, but, like, uh, I think they're dumb. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's... It's always kind of a little bit lazy to just pick a story's faults as oh, it's just the writers need to keep the drama up. Like, that's true. But it's a less interesting answer than um, actually explaining it within the context of the story. Like, with within the bounds of the story, that is. So, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, the, ironically enough, Watsonian explanation for all of that is that his friends are assholes. <laughs> I don't want to watch him deal with them anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was fun while it lasted. I would watch another uh adaptation reimagining of Sherlock, but there are very few that I know of that are actually quite good. I'm definitely not going back to the uh modern British one. Ugh. Don't worry, just wait a year and, and they'll release a new Sherlock show that's completely different. I hope so. That, that, that It feels like there's been hundreds of them. You know what there hasn't been in a while? Just like an actual classic Sherlock. Like, period appropriate, just like actually do Sherlock and film the stories. Mm -hmm. As they were. Like... I think the last one of those was the 70s, maybe the 80s? Yeah. So, that'd be cool. Actually, I don't know whether the... I didn't watch the films. The Robert Downey Jr. films. So that might have been those. I don't know. Like, I literally have no context for what those actually were. Aside from, it's Sherlock Holmes of some type thing maybe a little more action I think it was because it was you know Hollywood blockbuster I don't know I have hope well much like I have hope to see more Shakespeare adaptations I'm I'm surprised by how much I am a, a fan of the classics it's it's very strange to me like I it's a lot of tastes that I would not have expected of myself like 15 years ago. Oh well. Uh -huh. uh, the, it, it's one thing when school tries to make you learn the classics versus uh, forming an appreciation of them on your own. Yeah. 
And that, that's that's one thing I, I've noticed is that school tends to ruin people's uh, tolerance for certain uh, classic literature pieces. Yeah, I I might actually blame that specifically not on being forced to learn them, but forced to overanalyze them. Ah, uh, yeah. Because that's what they're trying to teach you. It's it's not so much about reading the classics and you know understanding what they're getting at. It's trying to pick apart literature and uh, find all of the detail and subtext because that's a useful skill. But they drive it so hard that you get the jokes like uh, the you know the meme the door of his house is red and this is to represent that this is an angry person that lives here. And you get the kid time traveling back to when the fucking author wrote the thing, bringing him back just to tell the teacher, "Hey, the door was red because we're fucking red." <laughs> yeah, that. Uh... There are some authors that do go that deep. Funnily enough, Shakespeare probably wasn't one of them. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Hmm. Mm. So that was a weird tension. Anyway, the the the, the door is red because red is the color of blood, but also the color of passion, and so that red door is one of both violence and love, and that is why the murderer goes through that door to kill his lover. I feel like you're quoting an essay you wrote in eighth grade. No, but it feels like it, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, funnily enough, a lot of kids, when they're told to do that kind of deep dive analysis, well, quote-unquote deep dive analysis, really the lesson they're learning is how to bullshit. Yeah. Especially when you're asked to give a presentation afterwards. Mm. You make stuff up. Because, honestly, uh, the, the thing that you learn later on is... A lot of it's just open to your interpretation, and there's different schools of study of interpretation, and you can't really give a wrong answer. You can make an argument for just about anything. The only thing the teachers really are looking out for is whether or not you can actually make an argu argument. Yeah. Hmm. What a nice little tangent. Yeah, isn't it fun just preaching to the choir of our audience of like 20-somethings and 30-somethings who already went through all this shit and this is useless for? <laughs> yeah. It's great. Love it. <laughs> uh, all right. So, I don't know. That's, that's, that's literally all I had because, you know, I watched the interesting thing the week before. One of the commissions I'm supposed to be doing that didn't because Nia is the invincible one. So, whoops. What? What? <sighs> it's okay. At least you had fun. Hmm. Uh. So yeah, I guess that's an episode. Decently. Uh, Patreon hasn't gone through yet. So it hasn't gone through yet. No. Yep. I literally got the email that I was being charged today. So. It hasn't gone through yet. Uh, so I guess this is uh, this a, this a podcast. That's a good one. Yay. Uh, Discord link in the description. Uh, we talk about... What have we been talking about recently in the Discord? Uh curious shoes and ships and sealing wax and cabbages and kings <laughs> I mean I'd believe it to be honest uh, work people have been <laughs> talking about work <laughs> yeah as Fun exciting time. as always yeah uh, but also the shit posting and chatting about gotcha and Henry being mad at me for rolling to be before he did. <laughs> <laughs>
But yeah, uh, Patreon link also in the description if you feel like it. No obligation. Yay. Yay. Uh, bye, bye, bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Podcast. Rabbits. Oh, Were you waiting the entire time you didn't get to be on an episode saying, uh, I have to, when I come back, I absolutely, absolutely have to say rabbits. Like, the longer this goes on, the more I have to do it. Would you believe me if I said no? Rabbits. Rabbits. <laughs>